friends Itza with Itza Thoughts here and this is another uh, design team project for Angela Holt Designs and the bleenchronicles.ning.com site. Uh, today we're going to be working on making our li own little dresser using empty matchbox cartons um, like this. I emptied these little boxes out in a jar, um, in a glass jar that I, I'm going to alter also. Um, I didn't bring it with me today, but that's like a, a to come project. And all of these are, oops, see, this one's not emptied. So I'm just going to empty these out. Put them aside in a glass container. <clears throat> and I'm going to be using, let me see, I'm going to make, uh, it's going to be a three stack, three rows of these. And each row is going to have four, I think. yeah so this is basically the base of it it's gonna look like this and these little boxes pull pull out and I'm gonna have to put something here to uh, give me uh, easy access to pull the little um, the little boxes out so I'm gonna use uh, 12 of these and I, in Angela's uh, shabby she kit, she um, included some of these big flat back pearls in the kit. And I'm going to use these as the feet of my little dresser. So I have four of those. I have a piece of uh, chipboard that I'm going to cut. Uh, to go around my matchbook, uh, my match boxes, to give it a, a more sturdy body to it. So we're gonna both, we're gonna all discover this at the same time because this is the first time I do something like this. So uh, fingers crossed that it's a successful project. <laughs> I have some ink. Um, this is an old ink pad that I keep putting uh, regular black ink in. So it's kind of, uh, it's been put to use, let's say. I have a magic marker. I'm going to use some wire. This is 20 gauge um, art wire. And I think I'm going to put these um, here to make the pulls. I'm going to make my own little handles to pull out the the little matchbox because this matchbox is is tiny. These little matchboxes are tiny. They're not uh, they're not big. Let me see. They are about 3 eighths by by an inch and a quarter so they're not really big and there's so many just so many things that you can possibly put here you can probably put probably put a bead or um, I don't know a button maybe or if you have some of these Tim Holtz um, little knobs I think these are a good size for these little matchboxes. Actually, they're like a perfect size. But I don't want to use all of my Tim goodness all in one project. And I think that the wire look will look really, um, really cool. If it comes out the way I see it in my head, I think it'll look really cool. So this is optional. 
and I have my paper cutter here and I'm going to be using old curiosity shop paper stack from graphic 45 and I'm in love with this paper stack I think it's beautiful if you like the steampunk um, grungy type of uh, paper and type of uh, theme then you're gonna love this paper collection and I I love this one look at how beautiful this is uh, I might just use this one for the base of my dresser or there's a really cool polka dot one here this one's really pretty also I want it to look really grungy steampunky type um, this one's cool too with the numbers oh I love this turquoise one this is really pretty but that's not the look that I'm going with and of course I love the bees hmm the stripes I like this one too so my choice is between the diamonds uh, and this floral one here or this one I think this one goes more with like Halloween what do you guys think which one do you guys think I should use I think I'm only going to need one sheet so it's not going to hurt too bad Which one? Doesn't want to come out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't want to pull out, guys. The first one, the diamonds, this one, yeah the diamond one is really pretty, it has like a script in it, it I'll show you guys up close, and this is the old curiosity paper stack from graphic 45s can you guys see the the little script it has in it yeah I think I'm gonna go with the diamonds although I'm gonna really hate cutting this <laughs> ah, decisions okay let's see um okay I'm not even gonna look at this side <laughs> I'm just gonna focus on this the first step I think is to glue these little darling match boxes together now that the paper line is established uh, I have to glue all of them together so I think I'm gonna use um, first in instinct is to grab my hot glue gun but uh, I think I'm just gonna go with beacon and this is beacon 3-in-1 wet glue it can be any type of uh, adhesive that you guys have. 
it can probably even be double sided tape but I find that um, if you want things to be really sturdy uh, I, I would go with the wet glue so let's see this is not really even going to be seen at all none of this is going to be seen because I'm going to cover it the only thing that's going to be visible is this part here so I can just glue everything and then kind of distress it with my my inks ink pad is what's going to happen here <clears throat> so I'm going to get my glue out and I'm going to start gluing them and stacking them the way that I want my dresser to look Um, Nikki, at the beginning, all I um, was explaining was just a basic supply list of what you're going to need. And I, we were kind of debating on the paper that I was going to use, but that's about it. I just really started uh, the project. So I'm going to have three rows of four. And I'm just adhering my match boxes on top of each other with 3-in-1 beacon glue, wet adhesive glue. So here's one stack. Here's my second row and I'm just going to start gluing them together. Um, these match boxes come in different sizes. I think there's a way bigger one, a bigger box than this. I think these look a lot cuter. And here's my last stack.
and I'm gonna glue that row to the rest of them. They get pushed out like this. Oops. Make sure they are all facing <laughs> the right direction before you do the backing. Now I'm going to measure my boxes and I'm going to cut a chipboard piece uh, and make a box so that it goes around the sides, the top and the bottom and the back. So everything is going to be covered with chipboard except for this part. And here's my piece of chipboard. Let's see here. And it is seven and a quarter inches by. No, wait, that's wrong. It is one, two, three, four and a quarter inches. I'm sorry, four and a quarter inches. Four and a quarter inches. And this is one, two, two and one eighth inches. And this is two inches. This really thick chipboard that I have here.
just cutting my chipboard guys just this second Here I have the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna have to put one in the back also. We'll need another strip. the bottom and the back now I just need to cut the sides and I'll tell you guys the measurements in a minute This is just the way my brain processes stuff at, at first when I'm at the beginning of a project that I've never tried before. This is a spur of the moment type of thing and I didn't really research it beforehand. So please bear with me, you guys. <laughs> That's so funny. My husband asked me if he should throw things out all the time also. Okay, so I have my sides. My top. My back. And my bottom pieces cut out. Okay, so I have three, three pieces of chipboard 
that I cut for the construction of my box and they are five and a half by two and a quarter. All three pieces are five and a half by two and a quarter. And the side pieces, which are gonna cover the side parts of my dresser are two and an eighth by two inches. So, Lucky for me, I have some card stock here. This is in purple, but it doesn't matter because um, I'm going to cover it with decorative paper anyway. So we're going to... This is how you're going to glue them on. Like this. This is how I'm going to glue it down on my cardstock. And I'm just going to get my in one glue again and I'm going to glue these pieces of chipboard onto the cardstock Make sure you leave a gap in between each piece of chipboard. Just a small teeny tiny little gap so that your paper doesn't break when you fold it. And I'll show you how I do mine. Get a piece of the same chipboard that you were using you put it against it and that's how you figure out how big a gap you're going to need like so and I'll show you guys you see that gap you're going to need that gap for when you fold your paint, your chipboard over like this. And that gap allows you to fold it nicely without ripping or breaking the paper. You're going to do the same thing to each piece of chipboard that you glue down. I think this would have been a lot easier, the chipboard part, if I do it with uh, double-sided adhesive, but I did not bring any of it with me. This is the only uh, type of adhesive I have with me that would work for this type of project. 
So again, you're going to get your piece of chipboard, line it up against your chipboard, and adhere the next piece down. So this piece should really be able to travel back and forth along here. Make sure you burnish it nicely. It dries relatively quick, so um, the dry time isn't too too bad for this type of glue. Bring in my piece of chipboard. And my remaining piece of chipboard. You know, just kind of condition your your paper and you're going to be folding it okay so I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut along the side here, along the side here. So this is going to bend in like so, this is going to come like so and wrap around this end like so, wrap around and that's where my box is going to live like so. Cut this axis off, the square here off. I'm 
I'm going to do the same here. going to be left with something that looks like this and I'm just going to um, cut these at an angle just to give it a nicer uh, finished look more of a tapered look although it's not going to be visible but I know it's there So it's looking like this. This is going to bend, fold over like so. This is what it's going to look like. That's the outside. As you can see, the inside is going to be also good, well covered. And this is going to be in the inside, like so. And then I can just um, decorate it with my pattern paper. So I need to glue this all in. I'm first going to put glue along the seams here. Bring one in. I'll bring the other one in. Like so. I'm going to put glue on this whole thing here. I'm going to glue these tabs down.
So there's my box. Now I'm going to distress it with my ink. And the outside part is going to be the part that gets covered with your design paper. Just distressing the whole thing with black ink. So the base color doesn't really matter because you're going to distress it anyway. All around the edges on all sides. like so you're going to do the same thing to your dresser here but I'm going to pull all of these little drawers out first or should I leave them in there well let's see distress all up just on one side you don't need to do the whole thing because this is going to all get glued to the inside of your box do those separate or you can use paint if you don't want to use ink you can paint around the edges also which it looks like what it's what it's which it looks like that's what I'm gonna do to paint the inside of them use my paint and I'm going to use again my folk art paint in midnight blue do you guys have any questions so far Just painting the inside. I like to have well finished products all the time, so and fully completely finished from top to bottom, side to side, back and front. My projects are always going to be well finished. have any questions now?
think if I would have used a foam brush, it would have been a lot faster with the foam brush. So that when people pick this up and look at it and start pulling the drawers and they start taking a peek at the whole project, they know that everything has been handcrafted to perfection. like if you guys were here in my craft room crafting along I'm so glad you guys stopped by I'm going to be giving um, a little one of my finished projects I'm going to be uh, randomly selecting somebody to to win it uh, in a little bit Or if you rather I send you um, a kit to make one of your own, I can also do that. Let me just finish painting this and we'll randomly select somebody while the paint dries. I just kind of traced around um, my chipboard, my my finished glued pieces here. Just kind of traced it on the chipboard, eyeballed it. This is being recorded, so if there's something you didn't catch, um, you can always come back to the recording later. Almost done. So you guys be ready to pick a number. in case any of this is seen you want to make sure it's all nice and covered and you're also going to want to paint this back part here So this is what the inside looks like. I painted the inside with black acrylic paint and I painted the inside of these with 
black acrylic paint and you can't see that here I painted the inside with black acrylic paint and this piece is going to get glued on to this piece here like this so I am going to put glue all around the four sides here all around Again, this is probably where the double-sided adhesive would come in well. I'm going to use a mixture of this and hot glue. squirt some hot glue on him. Fantastic. That's what it looks like. So this is the base and I'm going to glue, once I put the decorative paper, I'm going to glue down these uh, big flat back pearls like this at the bottom. And these are going to be the feet to my little um, drawer here. I, I'm going to paint them of course. And on the top it's basically open to put any kind of uh, decoration you can possibly think of. So now it's time to cut the paper. I'm just eyeballing it guys. I'm not really measuring. I'm just I'm on a roll. I don't have time to stop and measure. I think I'm going to use two different papers, uh, papers from this collection. I'm going to use the diamonds and I'm going to use the
I'm gonna use the diamonds and I'm gonna use this one, the floral one with the polka dots. This is going to be the bottom and the back part. And I'm going to use this one for the sides. Look at me being so brave and cutting through my paper. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's going to be the top. Just gonna glue it down with my three in one beacon. And I'm gonna wanna distress the edges first.
that looks pretty. Hmm. Or should it be like this? Yeah, I think it should be like this. Come on, glue. Do you guys have any questions? If you guys haven't stopped by the the Bling Chronicles .ning site. Um, you guys should really stop by and join the fun. There's a lot of awesome events and um, projects that are coming up for the month of September that you guys will not want to miss. Just a lot of fun uh, projects that you're, you're going to be a part of. And we're going to have swaps and all kinds of yumminess going on and about. Um, at, on the Ning site, so you guys should really, really stop by and check it out. A lot of fun projects and tutorials. We have a fabulous design team, um, so you're sure to expect a lot of fun, crafty projects. A lot of challenges, swaps. Um, a lot of events for the next couple of months so it's a it's a must if you guys love crafting plus it's for free you know and so this is what my box is looking like so far this is the top the bottom that's the back I love using um, paper stacks and projects like this because just the variation of the different looks that you can achieve using the same paper stack is, is Awesome. It's a really fun, uh, crafty community of crafters of all levels. Um, not just, you know, scrapbookers, but you also have mixed media um, projects fun stuff like that going on I'm working on a few fun ideas myself um, so you guys want to stay posted for that and join the Ning the Chronicles Bling the Bling Chronicles dot Ning site sorry about that The Bling Chronicles .com website. A lot of fun things going on. Yeah, there's a lot of fun challenges, projects, you name it. It's all there. Plus, uh, you can also have access to Angela's. Um, yummy bling and stuff like that there too. She 
keep posted on all the new stuff that she's bringing out really fun bunch of gals out there feels kind of heavy you know with the chipboard and all all the glue and stuff it it got a nice weight to it feels good So this is the top, the side, the back, the other side, and the bottom. This is the front. I'm going to have to paint the inside of every little tray. I'm going to paint them black. But I'm just putting them back just to show you guys, to give you an idea of what they're going to look like. See? Everything's in there nice and tight nice and snug and these are going to be the feet which is what why i needed the magic marker so i can paint them with a permanent marker like so and it doesn't matter if it's not perfect because I'm gonna give it a, a nice coat with uh, some gold paint afterwards you know me and my gold paint and my glitter You can also use your alcohol inks to paint these. I just didn't have any with me at the moment. So I, I'm going to make do with what I got and what I have is a permanent marker. And my hands are filthy. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys my hands in a bit. Okay, so here we are. This is what they look like. I just covered them up with a black permanent marker. And look at my hands. Ah, look at my fingers. Okay, so I promised you guys I was going to give away one of the projects that I made today. And I will, um, to one of you fabulous crafty girls out there, I will um, be mailing you this cute little pouch that we did in an earlier class today. So are you guys ready to play? Do you all have, um, are ready to pick a number? and so that you know this is not rigged i'm going to write a number on a piece of paper here's a blank piece of paper 
and I'm going to write a number. Now I'm going to fold it in half. Yes, this is a Sharpie. It's a permanent marker. It's a Sharpie. So you guys ready to play? Okay guys, pick a number from 1 to 100. guys are <laughs> you guys are like way off from one to a hundred and I guess the closest one is Shirley 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 you picked the closest number I picked a hundred <laughs> Yeah, but I picked a hundred. So the only person that's close to a hundred is Shirley. Shirley, darling, can you please um, message me your address um, on Facebook? PM me your address, and I'll have this beautiful little handmade pouch uh, shipped out to you shortly. Okay, darling. Thank you. And um, towards the end of uh, this project, I will be um, either giving away another project I've made or um, a kit. Do you want a kit or do you want uh, the project? Okay, now on to the project here at hand. Do 
depends on what Shirley takes. Um, at the end of this this uh, class, will I'll give away the 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 other one. Depends on what she picks, either the kit or the finished product. Okay, I'll send out a kit for you. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to glue down my little feet. And I'm going to do that with hot glue. so cute <laughs> those are the feet I'll take pictures of the finished um, project and put them on Facebook later on Okay, I'm going to start doing the little drawers. And I'm going to I'm going to paint them. I'm going to use paper for the bottom here.
I only brought my travel paper cutter. I didn't bring my big one with me. I'm gonna make a leaf out of my scraps. Put it in my stash. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need four more. Another leaf. So first I need to paint the inside of them before I can add anything to them. The beautiful thing about acrylic paint is that it dries really fast. So and I'm not adding paper to the sides of my um, match matchbook boxes because it's gonna alter the um, the width of the 
of the box and it won't fit into the already snug little slides. These little drawers make good uh, gifts also for the holidays. You can um, give it to somebody as a jewelry box or if it's a fellow crafter you can give them you know little dressers so they can put their their brads and their you know little doodads that they have I know I have a lot of little trinkets and stuff where this is going to be very handy Yeah, I love this paper. It's it's why it's been really hard for me to cut through it because I love it so much. That's why I still have a full secret garden pack <laughs> and I still have this old pack from a while ago. I don't know if it was like a year or two years ago that Curiosity Shop came out maybe even longer You can store your charms in here, your brads, your bling. Beads. All kinds of goodies you can stick in here. so inexpensive all you need is a piece of cardboard or chipboard and a set of these from the dollar store some paint some paper little embellishments and you're ready to go not a big burden on your pockets you don't even have to use paper if you don't want to you can paint the whole thing Create your own pattern paper with stamps and tissue paper. You can even use the decorative napkins in this project. Instead of putting paper over the chipboard, you can easily put tissue paper or gift wrapping paper, napkins. Possibilities by the bunch. Almost done guys, I got half of them done.
this is a very fun project simple to make and it's gonna look really really cute if you have a little girl you can put her barrettes in here um, be used as a jewelry box and there's different size match boxes so but this is uh, what I had I just threw a bunch of crafty stuff in my and two bags and um, I was ready to go I didn't really have any specific project in mind except for the clutch but this is a total off the top of the situation type of project I didn't uh, really plan for it ahead of time yeah you can put paper clips yep make one for the office make one for your home I always like having something pretty to look at at work some kind of nice pretty visual to look at there's moments of the day when you're at work that you just kind of need to step away and take a deep breath and looking at something totally fabulous always uh, makes me feel a lot better I'm like a I'm a craft addict if I don't craft I get the, the, the jitters And the withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> I get mood swings and everything. You name it. I'm a craft addict. One more. I really gotta go wash my hands. Look at this. Ah! Let me go wash my hands real quick, guys. Be back in two seconds. Maybe a little longer. Okay, <laughs> my hands were dirty. I had to go wash my hands. Yeah, I think crafts in general for me can't live without them, man. I get the jitters. Maybe crafting, like when I'm trying to go to sleep. 
like think about different kinds of projects that I can do or if I'm preparing for a specific project I spend you know my evening trying to figure it out in my head before I actually go for it but sometimes I think about it so much that when the time comes for me to actually like get it done it comes out looking like something totally different I end up going a totally different way which doesn't make any sense to me why I do that it's about six o'clock in the afternoon here in California in the San Fernando Valley and it feels muggy and super like moisture in the air and super hot feels like it's still in the 90s I really wish this air conditioning would kick in any minute now uh, but it's not so I feel really hot and I don't know where my fan oh there's my fan uh, yeah, sometimes it just won't shut down. The brain keeps working. And I'm just gluing the paper to the bottom of my little trays here. When you're done with your project, I don't think anyone's going to be able to really tell that you did this out of a couple of match bo match boxes. Sometimes I amaze myself even when I'm making something, when I, I have the finished product and I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, <laughs> I did that. Some of them are a little bigger than others. is to come up with a kind of pool for them and I 
have an idea in my head, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it because I don't have the right hole puncher. But I'm going to try and see how it comes out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use my Timmy little uh, pull, pull knobs over there. Yeah, I need to do that too. I have all of these projects in my head. Um, and I need to write them down. That's a very good idea. To put them on the fridge. I'm going to start keeping a, like a notebook with all my project ideas two more so I'm going to show you guys one little um drawer how oh, I'm gonna do the pull on it and then I'm gonna do the rest um at home with the when I have the right hole puncher so it's gonna kinda look like like this with the little dress drawers in there The little drawer and I like the way it's looking so far this one um, it tore a little bit when I yanked it out so I'm just gonna add some hot glue here to patch it up Last one. So these are my little drawers and in my head I envision the little drawer pulls with wire and um, with beads. So let me see if I have beads. I found some bling I want to use. yes I have my beads right here
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of wire and this is again 20 gauge wire. Remember with wire the lower the number the um, thicker and more stronger your wire is going to be. So the higher the number the more pliable and thin that your wire is going to be. And I'm going to cut a piece and I have to make two holes. If I had the right hole puncher, I can easily punch a hole through here and punch a hole through here. Um, it needs to be a really small, tiny hole. And I'm going to use the tip of my craft knife and hopefully I don't mess this up. So just kind of eyeball where it's going to be. And it has to be uh, wide enough to fit the wire through it. And here's my wire. And it went in perfectly easy. I'm going to make another hole with my craft knife like this. And get my beads out. If I can open it. I was thinking I had more beads. I do. little pearls here that I can mix in with some metal beads. Like so. Look at how perfect the beads fit in there. like these better. Twenty twelve, two, four, six, eight. Exactly twelve beads. Look at that. These are the beads I'm going to use with this project, which I just happen to have the exact perfect amount. Uh, 
beads. Okay, these are all the beads I'm going to need. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one end of the wire through and I'm going to coil this end with my needle nose pliers I am going to uh, it doesn't need to be in there okay I'm going to get the tip and I'm going to start curling it inwards like this Can you guys see that? I'm going to hold it and I'm going to start coiling the wire around like so. I'm going to do it a few times and this is what's going to stop the um, the wire from pulling through it doesn't have to really be perfect it just has to be coiled a few times it's gonna look like this And the coiled part is going to be in inside, on the inside of your drawer. You're going to add a little dab of hot glue. It would help if there's hot glue in there. You're going to add a dab of hot glue. Okay, here we go. A dab of hot glue and I'm going to pull it inwards. With my pliers, I'm going to hold it together till the hot glue dries. like so then I'm going to string my beads make sure that your the hole in, on your beads is wide enough to go through your wire like so and I'm going to Put this end through the other hole that I did. And pull it through very gently. And this is going to create your little drawer pull. with the beads. And you're going to coil this end to the same way. I cut mine a little too long. Just have to cut it a little bit. Get the tip and start coiling it around your pliers like so.
had some hot glue. With your pliers, you push it down till the hot glue dries. So this is what your drawer pull looks like. Let's see. Oh, look at how cute. And I'm going to make all of them like this. So it makes it easier for me to pull out the little drawers. Did you guys see that? Really cute, fun way to incorporate beads into your project. You can also make uh, paper beads out of your your um, scraps of paper. Paper beads are fun to make. I like using them in my charms. This is a paper bead. Yeah, I love it. I really like the way the beads add, you know, a little added um, design to your project. And very easy. It would be a lot easier if I had the right hole puncher. Um, otherwise, you can just use your craft knife like I did. And I can cut the wire ahead of time and have the wire ready. Perfect. So I cut off technically 12 pieces of uh, wire, craft wire. Including the one I already did. These are going to be the drawer pulls to my little drawer here. And I'm just going to keep everything together. Oh yeah, definitely. You should definitely make something like this to put your, your bling. So now it's basically all done. Just decorate the top part with flowers. Um, or even elements from the book, from the paper collection. I 
really like this shoe here so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna fussy cut that out mm. and put it where What else can I put up here? I'm not sure. I can probably put some bling here. I know I took this bling out to put along the edges here. My husband and I have been furniture shopping for the past couple of, um, of weeks and I've noticed that there's a lot, a lot of beautiful furniture out there where they have incorporated bling. Like on the plush pillows on the sofas, there's bling buttons, just like bling all over the place. And that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> So, I'm putting bling on my project too. And I mean, we went to just in down in in, in LA in Hollywood. There's um in Koreatown, there's like maybe I would say four blocks uh, with furniture stores. Um non-stop four blocks and all four blocks both uh, on both sides across the street and on the other side they each had furniture with bling all of them couches dressers chairs you name it everything had bling so since I'm a bling type of girl I'm gonna bling out my little dresser here too. Yeah, you can make your own matchboxes. It doesn't have to be tiny like these. You can make them any size you want. If you have cardboard or chipboard, you can totally make your own. <laughs> Look at that. Mm, I'm not sure if I want to put it along the top part here. What do you guys think? You think I should put some on the top part too? And the bottom part? Or should I just leave the sides? What do you guys think? Top and bottom?
Hmm, I'm still thinking of what to put on the top of mine. I'm thinking I'm going to put a picture frame up there. I'm just ruffling through my stuff trying to see what I got. I have this frame. These are these uh, frames from Michaels. I'm thinking it's too big. I don't know if I have any other picture frames. I don't think. Oh my god, that looks so cute. Look at that, guys. And I have a video on how to make these um, chipboard and wood piece shapes. I think, I think I like that. I think I'm going to make another one out of the paper stack here with her image in it. Yep. And this is just made out of chipboard, so easy peasy, easy peasy. And I happen to have a scrap piece of chipboard here that I didn't use. I think this is a really good size. This is about the size of an ATC card, which would be three and a half by two and a half. On the back part, I'm going to use, um, where's the other paper? I think I'll just paint the back part of it.
Okay, so back to getting my hands dirty. I'm going to roughly paint the back side of the chipboard and along the edges. triangle shape too to make it look like an actual picture frame so I'm going to paint both sides of this piece also. Don't forget to paint your edges. I'm actually going to use a piece of ribbon for this part here and I'll show you guys this one's all wet This could be a piece of um, card stock also, but I like the I like the shiny look of the satin. It's too wide. Okay. And I have, I'm going to glue, I just really need a small piece, I don't really need a big piece. And I'm going to glue half of it to this part and half of it to <clears throat> the back part of my chipboard piece. Like so. I'm going to align it with the bottom part here. down 
this is gonna let it stand like so so it looks like an actual picture frame although it's not and I'm gonna add some pearls But first, I am going to color them with my Sharpie. So it looks like little um, nails or studs are holding this thing together. But it's there strictly for decorative purpose. And I'll get rid of those little um, webs of hot glue with my hot with my heat gun. <laughs> Night, Pam. Thanks for stopping by. And that looks like it's an actual picture frame. So next I just have to glue my image to my chipboard. I'm going to add my image like so. Yeah, it's all really in the details on the little, you know, extra steps that you take to make a project um, look that much fabulous. All those little details really do matter. Just distressing the edges. And I'm gonna also distress my image here. So 
So it's going to go on top of my project like this. And I'm going to adhere it by adding a strip of hot glue gun along the edge here and along the edge there. So this is what the back side is going to look like. Can't really tell because it's black, but you'll be able to tell a little bit better in the pictures. And now it's basically just ready to um, add more embellishments. You can, I have those little um, empty poison looking bottles, the little tiny ones, the trinket ones. I have some of those at home, which is going to go perfectly well standing here. And I wanted to incorporate one of those little flying piggies. So let me cut one out. how beautiful this paper line is oh my goodness can't believe I cut it And I am still left with a good piece of paper here that I didn't use. So basically this project doesn't really take up a lot of paper. It takes up more time than it does paper. So again my sophisticated tool here with my gold paint. And I'm going to randomly add it to the bottom part of my dresser. Like so. And my glitter I'm glad I had um, that little embellishment with me that gave me the idea to put this up here. Otherwise, I would still be struggling looking about my stuff, trying to figure out what to put up there. And I'm going to heat set that, and that's going to give it a really fabulous texture. And your paint and your glue are going to bubble up, and that's what I want because that's what's going to give it the melted gold look like actual gold was melted on here and it's 
going to bubble. I'm going to do that all over the, the little treasure treasure chest here. With my sophisticated tool here. That's all corners. Now this is totally and completely optional. This is just my style. Um, I love adding this glitter and this gold or copper color to my projects. Loving this little project very much so. And I think that's those are the only techniques I'm going to use on here. Everything else is basically just decorating um, the little box. These pigs are super adorable. I've used them in a couple of projects already and they make the project look so cute.
probably stand him here somehow. Put him here to the side. Look how cute he is. And the only thing left is just to add flowers. You put some flowers on there. I just have to paint them with some Lindy sprays. And maybe add some metal embellishments. Um, put a nice stick pin in there. Some trinkets. butterflies in here and I have some watches here too hmm I think I grabbed the wrong tray Yeah, I grabbed the wrong B tray. This one doesn't have any of my... Oh, I found a cute key. This one doesn't have any of my butterflies in here. these corners at um, Miriam's Crafting Supplies. She's also online. She has some really great um, crafting supplies at her store. You guys should go check her out. Yeah, I make the food. 
Well, this is just the basics um, that I showed you guys here with this little dresser. I think I'm running out of time. Um, my husband just texted me to tell me he's going to be here in a short while. So I really need to clean, clean up my, my work area here before I leave. But this is the general idea. This is the basic uh, construction of these little uh, matchbook box matchbox dressers and I've seen a whole bunch of these um, online and I just thought I would give it a go and see what I came up with and I'm really really happy that I decided to to try it out with you guys today live um, so you guys can also see how fast and how easy and how unscary it is to make one of these little things especially if you're a beginning crafter a beginner um, I know things tend to be a little overwhelming at first um, so my best I guess advice would be to just go for it dive in there and go for it and don't overthink your projects when you tend to overthink you projects you kind of get stuck sometimes and sometimes that's a little hard to get out of when you're in that that little funk where you're you know what you want to do you just are overwhelmed with all the little details of the whole project um, but I think this is where I'm gonna leave it I won't forget, uh, I won't forget, Shirley, thank you. Um, so if you guys don't have any questions, I think I'm going to call it a night. And I will be posting pictures of my finished product, uh, my finished project um, online. So all of you are going to be able to have a look at what um, the finished project looks like. And I promised you guys another little gift. So since Shirley took the kit that I made for, that uh, I have for these little pouches, um, I'm actually going to be giving this one away now. This one or I guess I have enough material to come up with one more kit. So if you guys want to have another go at it, um, let's pick another random number from 1 to 100. So I'll write the number on a piece of paper. I'll write the number on a piece of paper. And you guys pick a number from one to a hundred. I wrote down my number on my piece of paper and you guys pick a number from 1 to 100 and um, we'll have another go at it and again you can either take the finished product project or I can uh, make another kit for you you decide what you all want to do Thank you guys, thank you. I'm so glad you guys stopped by. So you guys pick a number.